Hello, everybody. I hope you all are having a fantastic week. We're going to give everybody just a little bit of time to hop on here. If you are in the Horse Help course and you're watching this from the Horse Help course Facebook group, um, we're excited to have you and we have gotten your videos. We're super excited to go through these today. This is also broadcasting into some of our other different Facebook groups and Facebook pages as well to try and share a little bit of inspiration and share your hard work. So we're super excited to go through all these videos. There is a lot of content. Um, you guys have been working hard over the last three weeks. Um, for those of you that aren't in the course, we are in week number three of our six-week course covering our 12-step program where we take courses through preschool. If you have a round pen, if you don't have a round pen, from kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, so basically the way that our program works is we give the horse the final exam of each grade level. If they pass, we move on. If they don't pass, we fix that grade before moving on. The big key to this is passing, not perfection. And why that's important is if you ask for perfection, you keep looking for perfection, you're going to find that you're going to be frustrated, disappointed. Your horse is going to be frustrated and disappointed. And those two things together are not going to help you find success. So we're looking for passing. And today you may pass with a D with your horse. And tomorrow you may ask for a D plus. And then the next day ask for a C. But as long as they're passing, you're moving on to the next thing that's going to be more difficult for them. By moving on to that next thing that's more difficult, the grade that you did before that is going to become easier. So we're going to cover some of that today. Um, right now, we've worked all the way through preschool up to fourth grade, which is our lessons that we're working on for this week. So there's going to be a mix of everything, people who are just playing catch up, just getting started with going through preschool, kindergarten, and some of the younger grade levels, the younger, the earlier grade levels. And then we're going to work our way all the way up to our membership club, where we have people that are working on all kinds of crazy things. So this is going to be a variety of videos combined together. Whatever we don't get through from today, we're going to end up hopping into the membership and the course Facebook group tomorrow to try to get caught up. There's three hours worth of content. So we're just going to dive in. We're going to go until Michael's coffee runs out. He is locked and loaded. He's been training horses since seven o'clock this morning. Um, I've bathed like, I don't know, 15 horses today. We are prepping for winter or fall for us. That's not really a big deal, but we're getting some, um, some fall cleaning things done. The weather is beautiful, so it's nice to be able to work all day and not be super hot and sweaty. Still 75 degrees, so it's beautiful here. Hello to all of you guys that are hopping on, Miss Sheila, Allison, and um, Penny. If you guys hop on here and you want us to be able to see who's asking the question, make sure that you give StreamYard permission to use your Facebook or to see your Facebook, which will let us see your name on our end. Hi, Melissa, Sue, Christine, Patty, Michelle, Pam, Wendy. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for hopping on here. Yeah, so let's, let's get down to it. We've got our videos up. Michael will work his way through the first video that we have. That's an hour long. Um, if he's still got juice, we'll move into video two. Go as far as we can. We'll pause it where we stop. Um, we will make sure that we get through all of your videos if you're currently enrolled in the course and you want to be a part of that. We will cover your material, whether that's going to be this evening or tomorrow. Um, that, that's to be said for how much energy and caffeine we can put into Michael. So I'm going to step back for just a second and he's going to hop on. He's eating a popsicle, drinking some Cuban coffee. Did you get Cuban coffee? Mm -hmm. Do you want Cuban coffee? You need more? Okay. I'm good. Let's go. You're good? Okay. Excuse me. Roll out of the way. What is going on, guys? All kinds of people on there. Just another day in paradise, working these ponies all day. Everything from cold starts to warm bloods to Missouri Fox Trotters to Frisians to Anything you can't imagine. Everything. Connemara's. Hmm. A little, a little bit of everything. Tennessee it. Walkers. Thur so many. Thoroughbreds. Thoroughbreds. The drafts are gone. The drafts went home. That was nice. <laughs> but we are here for a reason, and we're going to get into that reason. Okay. I'm going to go finish feeding. Love you. I'll be back. Um, <laughs> this thing's supposed to be working. <laughs> oh, Great. Yeah. 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 Hey, find out what room for that student. All right, guys. So we are working on preschool. So I like to see the tarps all the way to the fence. Because if they don't touch the fence, you'll have that horse walking to two inches. Horses are real good about walking. If there's two inches between the fence and the tarp, they will walk in that two inches. So 
the good looking guy. Like right there, you saw how he made it through the tarp? He missed it with every single foot. You think the horses don't know where their feet are? Look how good he placed it. Now, if you have a flag stick or a bag stick and you start going too crazy and really getting in close to that horse and that horse is really not moving, Hi, my name is Jill, don't be afraid to grab Mercy, yourself one foot. This is 15-year-old spotted saddle horse. And we are going to work at preschool today. Come on, baby. Very nice. Oh, you can see me? <laughs> oh, eating popsicles. It's been a long day trying to get my sugars up, my bad. <laughs> How about now? Very nice work. Now, if your horse is... If your horse... Is having a problem coming towards you. Don't be afraid to push them out of your space. A lot of the horses, are, they're so sweet and so kind that they don't understand that you mean go away from them. So I was glad that you were able to, to push them off of you. Also, if you don't mind cutting your tarps, you may want to reuse those tarps for other things, and that's okay. But if you don't mind cutting your tarps, they're just for your horses. If you cut those tarps in half, well, now they're half as wide and twice as long so they make it where there's nowhere else to go except over the tarp. And that spacing that you have there, your horse is doing great and you are passing with flying colors. But if that was a horse that really didn't want to go over the tarps, that would be a lot of space for you to have to cover to get them to go over it. Remember, the bigger the obstacle, the easier it is to get them to go over it, which is contrary to popular belief. Hi, I'm Allison Rubenstein, and this is my horse, T. She's a 13-year-old Rocky Mountain mare, and we're going to do preschool. There we go. So that, that's not what I'm saying. A lot of our horses are so sweet that we have a hard time pushing them off. But remember, this horse, of course, moves off. But the horse that won't go for you, won't woe for you. So make sure that your horse respects you enough. You say, oh, preschool is kind of boring and it doesn't tell you much. I learned so much from preschool from a horse because it tells me how sophisticated they are. So when I see a horse like this, that in the beginning, I mean, you show them the flag and they don't even run from it. They're like, yeah, yeah, you're a person. You, there's no threat. I have no reason to move. Well, then that lets you know a lot about them. So that second tarp, not being able to go over, that kind of goes into the same thing about having those longer tarps or cutting those tarps in half where you can really string them out. It just makes it a lot easier for the person. So right there, you saw how the horse went in between the, the two-inch section between the fence and the and the tarp? Horses are good at that. I'm telling you, they're really good at placing their feet. There we go, there we go. Nice. All right, I'm Allison Rubenstein. This is my second horse, River. She is a five-year-old Rocky Mountain horse and we're working on preschool.
Miss Allison and River. I just worked a river name, a Rocky Mountain name, River. It stepped on my toe. I know because I still have the mark. There we go, nice work. And that's the goal. The goal is not to wear the horse out or get them tired or see how fast they can go. It's to see how much they respect you, how willing they are to move away from you. And when they're uncomfortable and you kind of put them in a tight spot where it's, you know, you were the car, what is their decision? How do they react? If they would rather put you in danger than go over the park, it tells you a lot about them. It tells you that, hey, I don't have a lot of respect and I don't want to run you over. The horse that's willing to run you over will run away with you. Good girl. Good girl. Very nice. One job anytime. You gotta understand, you're doing a great job, and that pen is not the easiest one to do preschool in. Big pen, small tarp. You really have to drive your horse well to get them there. The smaller the pen and the bigger the tarps, the easier it is. Good job driving. Flag in the in the push hand. There we go. Good job. Very nice. And quite frankly, if I get one time over in each direction, they don't have to go fast. They just have to move off my pressure and go over one time in each direction. A lot of times, I won't even get them going over so many times, so many times that they are comfortable. Like when I go to a cold star competition, I get Wait, them I over. This is Ruby. I get and them she over. She's a quarter school. horse. It's eight years old, and we are doing free kindergarten. I get them going over at a cold spine competition, but I don't get them over so well that they're just running away from me. I just get them over one time each direction. And then a lot of times I'll use the tarp to catch them because they'll be kind of hesitant to go over. And I'll, I'll use the tarp to kind of slow them down and I will catch them with that. So this is what I'm talking about. Smaller pen, smaller pen, bigger tarps. Look how much easier it is for her. So from the, girl, this Ruby. point to that point is a very small space for this young lady to have to move her feet to be able to get that horse over. Good girl, Ruby. Good girl. Right, so that's it. They're stopping to, to eat grass. Don't be afraid to put more pressure.
Hello, Ontario folks. You say, hey, well, what do you learn from this? What do you see from this? Hi, it's Luann, and this is Max. He's 18 months old, and he is a quarter horse, and we are doing pre kindergarten. So, this is an 18 month old colt. So, I can just look at these preschools, and it tells me so much about how, how our horse feels about our person. So, one of the reasons this is my one of my things that I do whenever I cold start or when I get a new horse in, it's because it tells me a lot about how they're raised. That has to be a well-raised, super domesticated horse. Look, right there. You see how he was willing to risk her to not go over that tarp? That's a domesticated pony right there. 18 months old and he would rather run at her than run over a tarp that's six inches wide. That's exactly why we do preschool. To see where their respect level's at and what we're gonna have to do to keep ourselves safe. The only horses that have ever put me in danger ever in my career for going over a tarp are very over domesticated horses that have been taught that human beings are no threat. We pose no threat. We come in peace. We're nothing but kindness and we're nothing but a scratch machine and cookie dispensers. And when we do that, then the horse says, hey, great. I'm glad I like you, but I'm still scared of everything else because I'm a prey animal. And that kind of puts us in danger. And I really don't care if they get the right answer, get the wrong answer. I just want to know what their answer is. So that colt, just in that one moment when he, when he put the brakes on and ran at his, his mother, that was enough for me to say, oh, okay, buddy, I see you. Uh, you're not scared of people. Look at him. We're chasing him with a flag stick and he's eating grass. That's how little he thinks that, that we're to be respected or that we're a threat. Again, doesn't make him any better, doesn't make him any worse but at least we know what we're working with. And that's the whole point of the program. And that's the whole point of the horse help course is for you guys to be able to read and judge your own horses and be able to say, hey, I see this horse. I see what his tendency is. So many times when we lose our confidence, it's from the fear of the unknown. Well, these are the little things that make you have confidence is your ability to be able to read that horse, your ability to be able to say, hey, that horse is snotty, that horse is a little brat, that horse is feral, that horse is very flighty, very scared. Uh, that horse is scared of everything else, but not worried about people at all. Uh, all these are things to take into account. So if I'm starting that colt, obviously he's he's only a year, year and some change, so I wouldn't be starting him under saddle. But let's say this, this colt is two, three years old, uh, and it's time yeah. to, to ride him. I understand that I have to gain his respect because he doesn't have a lot of respect for people. Uh, before I ride him. All these are the little tricks of the trade that I want you guys to get. All the things I want you to understand when you're out here working your horses. And that's exactly why we're starting from the ground up. You would be surprised about how many horses that have been ridden for 10 years that will fail miserably. You say, oh, okay. I see why they were having issues. Gotcha. You got a little Mustang here. Hey, hey, Miss Renee. And if you guys are, that are watching this have questions about what you're seeing or what we're talking about, put them in the comments below. So for me, that's all I've got to see for that horse to pass preschool. One time in each direction, not giving you a hard time, not threatening you. Again, the, the big misconception whenever we're free lunching and we're doing preschool like this, it is not to wear the horse out or to drive them to go fast. It's just to see... We work with so many strange horses that we don't know. It's just to see who they are. It's just to see their reaction when they get uncomfortable. Miss Jen says, once your horse has gone through this program, how often do you revisit these exercises? Um, preschool, almost never. Preschool is, is my introduction and lets me know what horse I'm dealing with. So preschool, almost never. Kindergarten and first grade, almost daily. 
desensitizing very little um i do want to keep them soft backing up i i do want to make them soft backing up and i do want to keep them soft left and right most importantly so kindergarten first grade is one of the few things that, that we're going to keep but kindergarten doesn't look this obvious like i'll grab a horse from the stall and take it to the tack room and i'll just stop and look at them and see if they look back at me so right here she's backing her horse up same thing with first grade First grade, I'm just going to bridle the horse up with whatever I want to ride the horse with and then grab them by the reins and ask them to circle around me, and they should be soft and easy. So very quickly, you're not putting in all this hard work from the ground before you ride. To the contrary, we really try to wean them away from it where that any horse you can just cinch up in half, no hump in their back, no nothing. You can just ride off calm and quiet. Nice job. I like the energy. I like the running man. So we're going through kindergarten here, and this is by far one of the most important things in horsemanship is that ability to back them up. I don't care what anybody says. If that horse doesn't back up out of your space, I don't care if you've been riding it for 10 years. It can't tell you any clearer in the animal kingdom that it doesn't respect you period bar none it may know how to do its job and it might put up with you and you might have not died yet but if that horse doesn't back up it doesn't respect you in the animal kingdom whoever backs up whoever gives ground that is the loser all right miss christine working on kindergarten this is sparrow her show pony The reason that that respect is so important. <laughs> I thought my phone was vibrating. It's the phone that she's videoing is vibrating. <laughs> so it's so important that we get that back up because you can have all the information in the world, but if that horse doesn't respect you. It doesn't matter. All of us, all of us that have fallen off of a horse. The vast majority, 99 percentile, have fallen off of a trained horse. There's very few of us, if the horse is feral, if you have to snub it up to a post and put hobbles on it and blindfold it to get on its back, is very few people, very few people that will ride that horse. So what you're telling me is all of us that have fallen off of horses, we've all fallen off on trained horses. Well, if you fall off of a trained horse that knows how to do its job, it either doesn't respect you or wasn't paying attention. So this is Miss Christine getting that respect from her shores. And all the time, I'll go back. Anytime there's any questions, if if my show horse, my finish horse, my good horse is paying attention, going right back to, to kindergarten. Hey, buddy, back up. You get your dream horse. You love it. You like it. You go to the bank. You get a truck and a trailer. Then you take off time from your work to go on a dream vacation to Smoky, Smoky Mountains or Myrtle Beach or wherever you're going. And that horse that comes off the trailer, you don't you don't recognize them because they're looking all over the place. They're calling for horses that they don't know. They're dancing around. If you have this in your in your protocol, you can just back this horse up out of your space and that'll reset the motor. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Release. All right, so the dole of the horse is. So right there, she's talking about how dull the horse is and how she had a hard time. She gave that horse about three more bonks than it needed. The, the harder it is for the horse to find the answer, the quicker the release is. Right there, release. Good, good release. Better timing that time. So some of you say, oh, well, my horse backs slow. Well, it has to back slow before it can back fast. And then we uh, every day we ask for a little bit more, a little bit more. You're north of Port Hope. We are in Poplarville, Mississippi. Good job, Christine.
There you go. Nice. That's it. All right, now, so make sure to give them enough line to stay out of your... There we go. So when you first walk off, give them that much line. I like it. Spunky. And release. Those feet move, release. Those feet move, release. So a lot of times our dull horses will stay dull because damn if I do, damn if I don't. If we keep shaking their face, even when they're moving their feet, well, then there's nothing that increases the urgency. So by releasing a little quicker, you'll get your mare to work a little harder. Very nice. Nice first grade. Make sure that the line is coming out of the bottom of your palm, not in between your pointer finger and your thumb. The reason being is that's how we ride under saddle, and we're doing everything we can to mirror how we ride under saddle. Also, once you get in that small circle, you won't pull to your left hip. You'll pull across your body. Horse is working real good, though. Love the, the intention to focus on the face. All these little things, they matter. There you go. Drive, drive, drive. So when that happens, drive to that flank. Nice. This time you're pulling across your body. I like it. Don't let the horse lay on you. Touch and release, touch and release until there's a little slack in that line. There we go. Drive forward. Nice. And when I say drive forward, what I mean is you start coming their direction. Don't go around them. Go straight to them and start bringing that rope towards their neck, towards their shoulder until they step away. All right, Miss Renee, it says still having trouble getting from trot to import from import. Do explain. This pony's working nice. I love big, thick horses that, that are told, hey, you got to be soft and easy too. A lot of times those horses get a little strong, get a little heavy, and then, then we start giving them a pass. Oh, you're too, you're too big and strong to be soft and easy. Oh, yes, you can. It's kind of like when you see a, a big, muscly person that, that's super flexible. It's absolutely possible. All right, Miss Allison. Yeah, when she does a little waspy thing, I want you to keep swinging and keep driving right to her, her flanks. That's going to drive her forward and keep bonking on her face to the side. So one hand is going to say, keep turning, keep looking at me. The other hand is going to say, keep going. So like right there, because what's happening is every time she moves her feet quick, she gets a release and she gets to, to take a break. So we don't want that. We want, when she does that, we just drive harder. We just keep going. We just so right there, you're trying to lead her through it, drive to it. Start smacking her on the neck. And I like overhanded versus underhanded because when you go underhanded, if you touch them, it loses all the momentum of your rope. There we go. There we go. Good job. Very nice. So, so guys, when you have that horse that's getting wall speed in first grade and like kind of doing wonky things, keep driving them forward. Keep driving them forward. What is the best grade for situational resistance? First grade is, is really my go-to for most things. The reason being, once I get this horse in the circle, I say, hey, this is our standard. This is our normal. Well, then I expect them to give me that softness, give me that eye, give me that butt, give me that shoulder no matter what so if it's a sensitive horse i'll get him in that circle good and i'll slap the saddle i'll get him in that circle good and i'll make a noise i'll get him in the circle good and, and I'll, I'll slap him under the belly uh, i'll do something to kind of set them off and then say i still expect you to pay attention i still expect you to turn i still expect you to give me your face and your undivided attention and that really helps with situational 
resistance. Your, your accountability group mentioned overhand instead of underhand. That's right. Hey, I wouldn't mention these things if I hadn't just tried it every way imaginable. Uh, but just little things like that, every little thing matters. Every little thing that you put together makes it easier and easier for you. All right, we're in kindergarten again. All right, for Renee, for Renee, if you have a pacey horse and you're working trot, that will absolutely help your gait because you'll use that trot to really lower his head, soften, soften his body, and really get him limber through his body, through his shoulders, so that you can put a, a arch and a bend in his body whenever you want, and that's really going to uh, put him in tilt easily and break that pace. As far as kindergarten goes right here, really good job. I like it. Good timing. Nice and soft. Like this a lot. Horses, look at that horse's head already down below yours. Very nice. All these are signs of a horse that does not want a problem. Saying, yes, ma'am. Make sure not to bend over when you do that. And the, the, the reason I don't want to bend over is not because I'm not saying your horse is going to try to murder you, but if that horse hears the sound or something like that and pops his nose up, we don't want to bunk in the nose. Going from kindergarten into first grade, coils, hell of a job picking up the coils. Pop her in our, our rear hand. Good job, young lady. Heck of attention to detail right there. Stop swinging. Your horse is already moving. There we go. Did it just as I said it. Nice. Moving in the butt. I like that. Very nice movement on that horse. Look how, how quiet and relaxed that horse is moving around. Basically just saying, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's what we want to see. Nice. Moving those shoulders over. Moving that butt. Moving that butt. Stepping out in front of him. Moving those shoulders. Really nice job. I'm pretty sure, Miss Marshall, this is the, the same video, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Yeah, same video on repeat. Move to the next one. Good job. You definitely get a sticker. All right, Sonny, 24-year-old Tennessee Walker. No real issues. Found a way to make him uncomfortable. He's pretty stiff and can be dull. He's got a big motor. Now remember, guys, when you're talking about these horses being dull... You will have a dead, lazy bum of a horse with one hoof in the grave. But when that chestnut mare switches her tail, he runs off like he's in the Kentucky Derby. So is he lazy or does he just not respect us? That's it. Release. Good job. So the harder the horse is the back, the more I'll be paying attention to their back feet. And when the back feet pick up, I'll immediately release. Sasha, if my horse is too slow when I lead him, there's a couple things we can do for that. 
we can do a butt rope, which is basically what we teach foals how to lead with and horses that don't want to lead how to lead with. We'll take a little lasso and put it over their butt, above their hocks, uh, and over basically over their back in front of their hips, and the bottom of the lasso will be above their hocks, and we'll lead them and put very light pressure on their face and walk off. If they don't immediately move from that pressure, we'll goose them, and then they'll want to keep up. You do that a couple of times, they really want to walk with you. They don't want to get left behind because they'll get goosed. The other thing you could do is more of a showmanship type work where you use a long whip and you walk with them, you lead them beside the fence, and when you walk off, uh, you'll tap them in the butt without looking at them because they're in between you and the fence. And that's how showmanship trainers work, uh, showmanship being in-hand work, and that really gets the horse to walk however fast you want to walk. They'll mirror you. Miss Barb, you are kicking butt. You said he's dull and heavy, but you got him bending real nice, looking real good. Nice. Look at that rope swinging like a ninja. Miss Mary said, someone asked me about popping the lead rope up and down versus side to side. Is there a reason why you picked your way? Absolutely so. Hey, left and right works. If, if you go up and down, the horse doesn't give you do left and right, great for you. The reason that we we give energy up and down is because that puts knots, pressure on the top notch, which ultimately we're going to stop them and back them with under the saddle. Side to side, it really doesn't put a lot of pressure on that top knot that's right there centered on top of their nose. So that's why we ask for energy up and down. There we go. Energy, energy, energy. That's it. Watch your feet. Release. So I probably would have released and then backed her up even more and then released and then backed them up even more. Nice. So get your horse to back before we start walking forward. That's it. Look how that, that space is, is getting bigger. Keep increasing. Nice. Good timing. Good timing. Don't walk backwards. Don't let that horse lunge you. Stand your ground. Pivot on your left foot. Push the horse around you. Other than that, your horse is looking pretty soft. We definitely don't want to walk backwards, uh, especially this early on in the program. Walking backwards, we use that for liberty uh, and drawing them in. Walking backwards in this stage of the game. See how every time we walk backwards, she follows? We don't want that horse pushing on our bubble. Because we plan on, in the coming days, in the coming steps, to make that horse uncomfortable. Well, if that horse is willing to push on our bubble, you better believe when you make them uncomfortable, they're coming for you. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that they respect your bubble and they don't want in your bubble unless you invite them in. You, you ever seen the vampire movies? They have to be invited in, you know, into a household. It's the exact same way. You want that horse to have to be invited into your bubble. If not, they do not want to be there. Um, because we plan on desensitizing them. We plan on shooting guns around them and having tarps around them and playing soccer and, and getting them ready for, for parades and getting them ready for for uh, police work, for all these different things. Well, if we plan on doing that, we know we're going to make them uncomfortable. we got to make sure they respect our space. Very good job. Make your war face a little bit and make that horse want to stay outside of your bubble a little bit more. You can still feed that horse carrots out of your mouth if you want to or lay him on his back and scrub his belly, but we don't need him in your bubble all the time.
Good job. Stepped into that horse. I don't know where you're at. That's big country right there. Two and a half year old Paso. Look when that horse started to look away when she started to give it pressure, she redirected it. go start working that row very nice working on kindergarten and first grade. We got our halter today, so hopefully no metal clip hurting his chin and he'll respond better. Thank you for the fast shipping. I appreciate that. And we'll see how we do. We got our Mustang, kindergarten and first grade. It's amazing just in this uh, these videos how many different places we've been. I feel like we've been all over the world. So make sure that we don't start moving our feet until our horse starts moving our feet. Because if we start popping our own bubble, that horse is not going to get to the point where he moves quicker. So a lot of us say, oh, why is my horse moving quicker? Well, he doesn't think you getting closer means more pressure. So then it, you're already doing a lot to get in the back and you pop your own bubble. Well, he doesn't see any reason to back up any quicker. So we need to make sure he understands the closer I get, the more pressure is coming. That's how you'll get that horse to back up quickly efficiently so very good job the only thing i would change is start wiggling that rope and start sending energy from out there and have him move his feet before you come forward there we go you see how we kind of pop our own bubble there he's backing it's not that he's he's ignoring you he's backing he just can't go as, as fast backwards as you're coming forwards. Don't walk backwards. Send him around you. Stand your ground and pop him on the shoulder. Make him get away from you. So right there, I think if we count on him, we take as many steps as our horse. And very common, something that happens often, all the time. Uh, but watch our footfall. We're basically leading that horse to the circle versus driving that horse. And the reason that that's relevant is whenever you ride him, your feet won't be moving. So if he gets accustomed to you leading him through everything and then you're not there to lead him because you're in, on his back and you have to drive him, if he hasn't been driven, well, then he might have an adverse effect to that. So that, those are the two suggestions that I would suggest to help you out. I guess my question would be how we've been working on the backup for a while and he still doesn't want to get out of my space very fast. Um, point is if I'm doing something wrong. Um, the lunging, I feel like I'm going, stepping backwards, but not quite sure. Thanks. 
Barb Hop and Halo working on kindergarten first grade. Halo's recovering from an abscess, so I she's a stubborn mare for me, but I try not to push her too much because she's sore in the hind a lot. Um, but this is us doing kindergarten and first grade. So she was talking about getting that horse backing up. I mean, all she has to do is make sure, there we go. Make sure not to pop her own bubble and make sure that that horse backs up. There you go, back the horse's feet before we move our feet. Back the horse's feet before we move our feet. And then she starts to understand, oh, when you get closer, the more pressure's coming with you, then she'll start to, to back up. One of our mares can go weeks without being worked and comes back right back to the exercise like she has, no matter how much time she has off, seems to pass everything perfect. She tests new riders. Another mare tests new riders when she has time off. We often have to review and go back to it. After long periods of time not working, we're not going to have a fun ride unless we go back and fix it. Do you think it's her personality? Absolutely. Some horses... They get cold started and they never get worked again for the rest of their days and they act the same and they don't get schooled on anymore and they'll go months without riding the, all the time and they'll be the same horse. And other horses, you'll put time and time and time in. And as long as you got that horse's respect and undivided attention, they will work good. But if the next rider doesn't have the horse's respect and undivided attention, so it absolutely comes down to a horse on horse basis. Um, which horse doesn't want to get in trouble? Which horse is very respectful? Some horses respect easier than others, just like people. Uh, some horses have more work drive than other horses, just like people. So all those things come into play when it comes to their performance. That's why you having this really lets you know, oh, that mare, hell, you don't, you don't even really have to, to work her too much. She's going to come out and work good. That other mare, you know you want to go through your steps before you hop on the trail, especially if she's had time off because if she isn't passing. All right, my lady, here the same thing. We want to make sure. That whenever we start popping that shoulder, that, that we stand our ground. If you walk anywhere, it's going to be straight towards her. It's going to be in a straight line so that she goes away from you. Think about that. Everything about preschool, kindergarten, first grade is all about you earning your respect. So we talk about that word respect, and people automatically assume that you have like a baseball bat or you give them like a mafia offer and you have like a cigar hanging out of your mouth and you're eating in, you know, Italian food in the back corner. No, no, that's that's not how this horse thing works. You gain a horse's respect by getting them to go backwards, by moving their feet, by driving them away from you, because that's how they earn each other's respect. This is their language. I didn't invent this. This isn't my doing. This is what they came up with, where they said, oh, whenever I want that other horse to move, I show my teeth, they move, they get a release. If they don't, I bite them. Next time they move, they get a release. This is horse's uh, language. We're just picking up on it and using it to, to communicate with them. Add in the late kindergarten. Notice we stop. The person was the one backing up. Let's make sure we back her up. I love that that is this long and this many times and this this many hours because it would just get so repeated in your head. Very nice work. That time you didn't have to take a step backwards. All these little things matter. They don't matter to you. They don't matter to people because this is not our language. This is their language. But every time you have to take a step backwards from your horse, that horse is saying, uh-huh, I gotcha. Very nice. Just keep driving. That's it. Whenever you're ready again. Add in Lily, head down. Nice work. Love both hands between you and your horse. So that's a horse that's being respectful. It's pretty obvious. I can see 30 horses getting ready to go on a trail and tell you who's most likely to fall off. The, per the horse that has his head Add in the in air and his eyes hanging out right. and the horse dancing all around, they're probably about to have issue the horse that is head in the dirt all other horses getting ready and bumping against them odds are they're going to be fine make sure to stop leading your horse and bring your hand across there 
bring your hand across your body and that'll get you even more bend. You leave that hand out in front of you, it kind of straightens out the horse. And that's kind of why she's looking away from you. So you're in the perfect place. You're in the perfect place to drive her, but now let that right hand come across your body and I'll get more bend out of her face. Very nice. Better bend this direction. Mostly because you're not leading her this way. Your hand's closer to your body, so you're getting more bend out of her. The reason that this is so important, that's not very, where you're standing right there is not very far from you being on her back, driving her forward. The more, the smaller the steps, the longer lasting the results. Extra credit. Uh-oh, we're working extra credit. Rear crossover. Rear crossover, I like it. Moving that butt. Yes, sir. Good job. You sent that horse around you. I was about to pick on you. Don't walk around there for your horse, but you didn't do it. Good job. Driving that horse's face to her butt. That's it. Now you can look at that butt. That's great. Uh, but if she doesn't move her butt, grab her face and bring her face towards her butt. Okay. Add a millisecond grade. Doing a little desensitizing. Very nice. Make sure as we step beside her, that's too much rope. If she was to hop forward right now, she could put a foot right in your chest. We want to make sure that we have a short enough frame that if that horse wanted to jump forward, they would have run into their weight on their face before they got their hip past you. And you say, well, well this horse isn't that, isn't that uh, spooky. Okay, but the habits that we pick up on our good horses will get us busted on the bad horses. So even though this horse doesn't threaten you or worry you, if we get bad habits, oftentimes the people that I work with that have lost their confidence, it's never their their love horse, their heart horse that they had for 20 years that hurt them. It was, they had one horse for 20 years, they came up with a language that wasn't horsemanship, and then when, they, when that horse ultimately passed or they had to get a new horse or they had to retire that horse and they got a new horse, the new horse doesn't speak your special language that you and that horse for 20 years had that you had from, from childhood so that horse is like i don't know what you mean and then does its own thing that's because we we got poor horsemanship because our horse was so forgiving and our horse was so easy so even if we have an easy horse let's let's put a little pressure on ourselves to have those good things and something as simple as making sure when we're trying to spook them like we are now that we have enough lead rope that it can't their hip can't pass us because again all that stuff is just muscle memory We're just going back and making sure that that horse can listen under distress, that that horse can listen whenever it's uncomfortable. Look how his feet are stickier. Look at look how it's harder to back that horse up. You think it's because the tarp is so heavy? No, the horse is like, what's on my back? Pay attention to that versus paying attention to you. That's why it's part of it. The reason we have these extra steps in, the reason we have the desensitizing, the reason we have desensitizing in motion is because, again, people get hurt on trained horses. Just because your horse is trained doesn't excite me. I want to know what your horse does 
whenever it's uncomfortable. And we're going out of our way to try to make that horse mentally uncomfortable so we know who they are and what they're going to do. That's the whole point of preschool. That's the whole point of everything along the way when we're making that horse uncomfortable. See what they're going to do. Now, this horse right here is worth its weight in gold. It is passing with flying colors. I guess the husband's passing with flying colors, too. Good job. See, that's that's a wife that loves her husband. Look at that husband horse. That's a nice husband horse. Sometimes I get husband horses into work, and I think, oh, you don't really love your – you got some insurance on your husband. You're trying to get him killed. Poor husband knows nothing about horses, and the horse is jumping through the air and flipping over backwards and trying to, to bite and strike and say, oh, this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is what a husband horse should look like. Very nice work. Horse passes that. Pass the test. It's good to go. More desensitizing. Walking over tarps. Very nice. I believe that, Miss Melissa. I need about a hundred horses like her. All righty. Very good job. Ed and Lily. Angela and Sandy. Let's see what we've got. Oh, looking a little drafty. That's it. Don't be afraid to extend your arm right into their nose. Say, hey, my bubble matters. You will not hurt your horse. You will not make your horse head shy. It'll just start letting that horse know, hey, I do have a bubble. You have to respect it. There you go. So, like, right there, good job. You kept the horse out of your bubble. If that horse keeps coming forward, don't be afraid. The reason you have your hands up between them is because you're telling them, hey, I will put this palm right on your kisser. Uh, and don't be afraid to do that. The horse is armed with hooves and teeth and body weight. We're pint size. Don't be afraid to put your palm right on their kisser if they are not respecting your bubble. You only have to do it once or twice. Then you're giving that horse a reason to respect your bubble. Turn around. Don't take a step back. Good job. Energy, energy, energy down that rope. Ding, 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 ding. More, more, more. And release. Release. So she did absolutely did a good job. She absolutely is passing that. She's backing that horse up. But I'm telling you, if you want to get the horse more efficient, you got to release whenever they, they first try because... If they're going to get pressure if they try and they get pressure if they don't try, well, then they're not going to try. Especially for your duller horses. Energy, energy, release. There we go. Release. And release. Good job. So these are the little the little tricks to getting these horses a little bit quicker on their feet, a little bit more moving is the ability to release quicker. makes that horse want to try faster. Don't walk beside her, push the horse around you. If you're about to do first grade, see how we're moving out of her way. Start popping her, pop that shoulder, pop that neck. There we go. Don't backpedal, stand your ground. There we go. Nice, nice. If she gets any closer to you than that, pick that hand up that you're holding down by your hip and put it right by her cheek and her face and she's going to step away from you. That's it. That's it. That's better. I like that roundness in your horse. You're driving the horse forward. Looking at her face. She's looking at you nice and bent.
So remember, when our horses try, try to run into us, they like to put their shoulder on us. So don't play that shouldering game. They're putting their shoulder in you. Make sure you bring that hand up right by our face so that they don't want to put that shoulder on you. That's it. Love the bend in that horse. A lot of times you get anything drafty, whether a Belgian or a Haffy or, or a Gypsy or anything. Okay, so she's asking if that's a pass or not. That's a pass. Your horse is backing up and she's giving left and right. We can do a couple things to make it more efficient, mostly just drive the horse away from you. That's that's the biggest thing. Just drive the horse away from you, stand your ground, um, release a little quicker on the backup so that horse says, oh, if I take a step, I'll get a release. If I take a step, I'll get a release. And that one step becomes two, becomes five. And very quickly, you have a horse moving quicker. But if she takes a step, and there's still pressure and she takes another step and there's still pressure and she takes four steps and there's still pressure. And then I know where you release. She really doesn't understand where she got the release from. She knows that she's going backwards, but there's really not a uh, reason to speed up because if she did, there still wouldn't be a release. So the ability to increase uh, the physical pressure with her because she's a little dull and the ability to quit quicker. Um, and then when in first grade, you're passing first grade, a horse is soft and easy. Don't take any backwards steps. Don't be afraid to put your hand up in the horse's face between you and your horse's face so that she steps around you. You do those couple of things, it's going to gain you more respect, more space, and your horse is going to work better. My name is Paula Marsh. I'm from Mississippi, and this is my horse, Banjo. He's a 16-year-old Appaloosa, and we are doing kindergarten and first grade. Kindergarten and first grade. Nice. Release. 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 Good job. That's it. Don't walk backwards. When I'm looking at somebody lunge a horse or I'm looking at myself on video lunging a horse, I want to make sure that the horse is taking way more steps than me. Whenever I see my person, walking more than our horse i say oh that horse is already thinking oh i'm the boss of you because in the animal kingdom whoever gives ground is the loser in the animal kingdom that's why it's so important it's not because it's not because i care if you get your cardio in when you're working your horse that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is whenever you start moving your feet more than they're moving their feet they are saying oh i get the advantage you did good horse backed up gave his face in both directions you want to do better and get a better grade even get a sticker Stand your ground, make the horse move around you. When you switch sides, you don't switch sides. He switches sides. That's another thing I want you guys to, to understand. When we change directions, we are not switching sides. We are changing directions. So that means we stand in one place and we look at that horse right in the face and we say, hey, go the other direction. But we're not going to walk around that horse because, again, you're starting to give your territory. You're starting to walk around and making it easier for your horse. Your horse has four feet. You have two. They move easier than you do. Make them walk around you. And those little bitty details uh, can really make a big difference. I have an extremely dull person on mare that keeps pushing into my space almost no matter what I seem to do. Rather than back up, she lifts her head higher and higher and tries to make herself bigger. I've tried teaching her with long lines as well as translate. She's mostly been a driving horse. Although it seems to have made it better, when I go back in front of her, it's almost like she goes back to, to what she's doing again. What do you think? Any suggestions? Yes, Miss Christine. Whenever you are working on those big drafts, long lines are great. Make sure you're working that friction where, I mean, a little left, right, left, right, left, right with those reins where she starts getting soft off of that halter and really says, ooh, I don't want that halter moving on me. And then whenever you translate that to, to forward um, under – when you get in front of her again, it's the same thing. You're trying to work that friction and close the gap between those two things. 
especially with the Percherons, especially with the, the big horses. They're bred not to give the pressure. So it's your job to make them understand, hey, I'm not going to force you. I'm going to use friction on you. And that's going to really be what softens them up. All in all, good job. Elvis. Elvis, say hello. We're working. And he's going to be reintroduced to all the Respect Series again. He's a little more sensitive than Fia is. And um, we're going to work on everything with him. So we're going to start the first couple grades here um, and see how he does. Come on, Elvis. Come on. Working Elvis. Good name for a horse. Hey. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. If Elvis is having a bad day, do you tell him you ain't nothing but a hound dog? Yeah. Asking for a friend. There we go. Getting that back up. Try to keep that back up straight. When you back them, if they go left, you pull right. If they pull right, you go left. Like right there. You see how you get one eye? Pull to the left to get that other eye. I want two eyes and two ears. There you go. Swing that rope, swing that rope, swing that rope. Drive into that shoulder. Pop, pop, pop. Now drive that flank, 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 flank. There we go. Right on that hip. Keep driving, keep driving, keep walking, keep driving. Don't quit, don't quit, don't stop swinging, don't keep keep going. There we go. Good job. Good job. Way to see it through. Guys, most folks, your natural human instinct, when you press a button and it does not go, we stop pressing the button. That's very common sense. That's very human instinct. But in horse sense, when we're not getting that answer, we got to keep driving, keep kissing, keep pushing. She was uh, resilient enough to keep swinging the rope. But don't stop, not even for a moment. If you're clicking, don't stop, not even for a moment. If you're kissing, don't stop, not even for a moment. So that horse knows when you get quiet, oh, that's what you want. Start swinging. Start swinging. See how you're trying to hold that horse there when he starts backing up? If he starts backing up, let him. You can power walk faster than he can walk backwards. If he starts backing up, you just keep going forward and drive towards that flank. I hear a can bag. I don't see a can bag. Good job. Always be aware of little coils. Very nice. I'm going to try the worthy bird or leading my horse by on the nose who just won't move. Is there anything we should try first? No, nope, that's it. If the horse won't move, grab his face, move his butt. Grab his face, move his butt. So if that's the whirly bird or however you got to get his face to move his butt, instead of trying to move four feet, just move two. Just move his back two. Just move his back two. Just move his back two. Next thing you know, it'll become your horse's idea to want to move. Very nice. I like that flagstick. Okay, now we got the flagstick. Now let's try undivided attention again. Ready? I right, see how we're walking back for undivided attention. I want you to be 
you're standing directly in front of him. There you go. Pop his flank. Pop his flank. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't pull on him. Drive that flank. Drive that flank. Drive that flank. So that release is making him. There we go. Keep driving into that flank. So many of us were thinking about leading this horse through the circle. You're driving that horse through the circle. And the difference between leading and driving is we don't have to pull on them at all. We just start popping until they move. Well, if you start popping, they're going to want to get away. But when they get away, let's say they go backwards. Okay, drive, 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 drive. They're going backwards, backwards, backwards. You're not stopping popping. Then you, they take one step forward and the popping immediately goes away. They're going to say, oh, she wants me to go forward around her. Very quickly, they'll understand the difference. One day, they'll understand the difference. One session. But if every time they take a step backwards, we stop popping, basically we're teaching that horse how to pull away from us. We're teaching that horse how to find the phone release. Drive, 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 drive. Attack the flank. Good boy, walk. Walk. Swing, swing, swing. Keep walking, keep walking straight towards them. See how we kind of get in that tug of war match? We don't want the tug of war match. We want every time that they don't go the direction you want, that we start coming in their direction, they say, oh, I don't want you coming my direction, so I'm going to go just where you want. Okay, so I don't think I'm getting much of a bend in his neck, so I'm going to try a whirly bird. Um, but I'm open to any suggestions you might have. So you drive into that, to that hip, you drive into that flank, and making him go forward and find a way out is going to get the bend for you. But a whirly bird is not a bad idea. So she's going to pull that horse around. Nice bend right there. Good job. Very nice. Way to make the adjustment when you don't get the answer that you're looking for. And that's our video for today. I'm going to take him out to the obstacles and walk him across a couple bridges. But I was curious to see what you thought of his respect um, and keeping his eye on me. Thanks. Bye. My name is Michelle Vaught and this is my horse Fancy. We're working on kindergarten. nice good good timing good timing ask that horse to back up every time she did you you stopped very nice i like the space between you and your horse I like that fencing. All right, you can come. My name is Michelle Vaught, and this is my horse, my daughter's horse, Boomerang. Working Boomerang. Good job on the last horse. Very respectful. I like it. 
There you go. Keeps in that rope through. That looks like a real light cotton rope. So that that will have an effect on your ability to work. If you have those those ropes that are so light that they feel like they could float away in the air, some some of those cotton ropes are really light. It almost feels like you have to work hard because there's no weight to them, so they don't get a lot of bang for your buck. Which is okay. Just you have to to know that you're gonna have to send extra energy because they don't have a lot of life. Those heavier marine ropes, when you send some, some energy to them, since they're heavy, it puts some some oomph on them. That's it. That's it. Nice. Love that spacing. A lot better. A lot safer. Hey, there we go. If you uh, take a step and that joker doesn't immediately stop, throw your hands up, make, make a gesture. Let him know whenever you stop, he should stop. So you got to understand, too, guys, a lot of horses, they've had their whole life of leading on somebody's shoulder, and now we're trying to change that overnight. We're going to have to convince them. So, quite frankly, with that rope right there, I'd probably grab I have. I see a clip on that. I'd probably grab him by the nose uh, so we can pull downwards off of his nose because it looks like to me that that rope isn't really light enough and we're kind of under that horse. So if we grab that light lead rope and we put it on top of his nose, we would get more – more pressure for all that work that we're putting in. So we would have to do a lot less and we get a lot more reaction from our horse. So whenever we're stopping, we're stopping so calmly and quietly. So stop and plant and pick a foot up and march like you're uh, the queen's guard. Like whenever you stop and turn, stomp that foot down. Let him know, oh, I need to be doing something. But we're stopping and kind of waiting to see what the horse is going to do. Let him know you want something. Lead him to the right answer. About face and stomp. That was better. Look, you were a little bit more abrupt there. Look how your horse stopped better. It wasn't an inviting stop. It was a, hey, we stopped. Don't be afraid to put a hand right in his face. Extend those arms and let him say, hey, nope, don't come inside my arms reach. Because then you end up like this, kind of under the horse where we're kind of driving and pulling. And that's not awesome. Now we're adjusting the halter. There you go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Be persistent. Be persistent and release. Again, 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 again. Nice. Better? Like I said, I think you have a couple things. I think you have a, a dull horse that's not very respectful. Uh, we have a sweet, kind hand. And we have a lead rope that's not helping us. So I believe the adjustment to make there is be a little bit more abrupt with your stops and put that clip on his nose. I do believe I see a clip underneath that. Put that on his nose so that when that hand comes down or to one side or the other, it does more. Because our horse just looks unenthused, like, oh, okay.
There you go. He goes right. You pull left. He goes left. You pull right. So another thing too, I see a lot of, a lot of us were uncomfortable having the horse that far away from us. Our school has has schooling has taught us we need that horse right over our shoulder. So we're kind of contradicting ourselves. We want to push the horse out of our bow, but then we're trying to pull them in whenever we walk out. Don't be afraid to give them a little lead rope, to give them a little space to let them be outside of your bubble. Good job in first grade. Got that young horse working good. I think if you give that horse a, a foot more whenever you're walking off you and her both will be a lot more comfortable and what i see you doing there you're doing great you got the horse backing got the horse given the only thing i i say is kind of the leading process we're kind of getting the horse respectful of our space but then we're kind of leading the horse and telling the horse to be in our space by not giving it enough lead rope that little adjustment can make a big difference when I'm walking horses, quite frankly, I don't care if they're really? feet away from me as long as they're going with me at the same right, speed I'm going. Hamilton, this is Jasper, Rocky Mountain uh, horse, and we're going to do kindergarten and first grade. All right, working Jasper, kindergarten and first grade. Okay, that's kindergarten. <laughs> Very nice. Good job. Good job. Oh, and then you step backwards. I was about to give you the, the sticker of the day because you didn't move your feet and you told the horse to switch directions without moving your feet. Then you took a step backwards. And we're gonna do the square no here. backward steps. Stand our ground or just like that chestnut mare, if we're trying to move that horse, you go forward and towards them. All right, start swinging that rope. That side's harder for us. <laughs> so the only reason that, that side's harder is he's getting a release. Don't be afraid to swing that rope. All right, we're moving that butt. Gotcha. All right, so, okay, so we're moving the shoulder. The reason that... I have a hard time getting her to go forward without leading her. So anyway. Okay, so the reason that you're having an issue moving that shoulder is you're not driving her forward. Earlier, the, the way that you had her going around you, if you then step towards her shoulder, she would move that shoulder easily. But like right there, when you switch from moving her butt to moving her shoulders, you need to pop on her or drive her forward. And there's no energy to switch from a pivot to forward. And every time that you move those shoulders, you got to have them moving forward because it's a, a shoulder yield, which means it's not a pivot. They have to be going forward. Working on water. Very nice. Light and softness.
All right, guys. Anytime, not that you're having a hard time in South Savannah. See, I'm looking in the comments uh, of people having a hard time moving the shoulders. The reason the shoulders are the last thing in first grade that we do is because you got to have the forward moving well. So we got to be driving them. And the other thing is we need to be behind the cinch. See, like right there, good job on the butt. Let's see if she gets to the shoulders. So you see, she could be almost anywhere and drive that butt, no problem. But when she goes to the shoulders, she has to be behind the shoulders because she has to be driving the horse. If we get in front of the shoulders and try to push the shoulders, we jump forward and we don't get it. The other thing I see people do is really try to flex the horse really hard towards the shoulders. And the problem with that is it shuts them down versus drives them forward. So anytime we want to move the shoulders, remember we got to be driving them forward. So that means we need to be behind the shoulders. We need to be behind where the cinch would be, driving that horse forward. And then uh, pro tip number two is we can't overflex them. If we overflex them, then they end up bending and giving and not going. Oh. What other platforms are you broadcasting? I'm not seeing many comments on Facebook. Uh, it's all over different groups, so it goes to all the different places at the same time. It's all the same. Hello, this is Allison Rubenstein. I'm working with Chocolate Tea on Kindergarten, my 13-year-old Rocky Mountain mare. All right, Jamie, you got this. Light bulb moment. You've been in front of the shoulder while trying. Absolutely. It happens to all of you. And it's something so simple that you could watch somebody do it 10 times and not realize that they're one step further back on it. And it's like, it's either you're one step further back or you've driven that horse one step in front of you. It's the same answer. You've got to be behind that drop line. All right, so this mare's a little duller, a little harder to back up. So notice how she increases that pressure. Increase that pressure. Notice I say the increase of pressure. She didn't bonk that horse, crack that horse. She just got bigger and louder and bigger and louder until the horse got uncomfortable being in her space. Very nice work. Oh, we got a Hello, this is Allison Rubenstein. This is my horse, Chocolate Tea, 13 year old Rocky Mountain mare, working on first grade. So, oftentimes, the horses that are going to be duller for backing, they're also duller for doing first grade, too. All these things, you are acquired information as you do more and more stuff to do. So as I work in the clinic, every exercise that I do, I'm acquiring information that better prepares me to work with that. You notice how much pressure it takes to move their feet, how much pressure it takes to turn the steering wheel. People think, a lot of people think, oh, this is boring, it's just groundwork. This is the simplicity and the simplicity is our ability to obtain information, obtain data, and then make adjustments accordingly. And we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have a way to take this data. Nice. If I'm moving that butt, good job. You, you changed it. You were kind of leading her. Now you're driving that butt, and you brought her face towards her butt. I want to make it intention, intentionally. When I move that butt, I want to bring her face towards her butt. Good job standing your ground and making her move around you. Kudos. Very nice. 
And I say kudos because you see how easy it is to not do that. How many people have not been able to stay there? Right? right there, that horse starts getting in your space right there. Don't be afraid to put a hand up in her face. See how your hand's kind of at her withers? The withers are, are dull. The wizard, the withers have no reason to step away from you. You bring that hand up towards her face, that makes them want to step away from you. All right, working Vestido. I just saw Vestido at a clinic. They were doing awesome. I missed this guy. So she was having a, a real issue with this guy. Sent him down to, to Mississippi, and we understand why she was having a real issue. We were able to help him with some of his sensitivity issues. Nice. Way to create energy, but then take it away. Very important. Uh, like, that's what abruptness is. When I say, hey, turn around abruptly, that was abrupt. You saw how she was walking in and out of nowhere? What the? Wait for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now this is what we worked on at the clinic. She dropped. She was driving the horse really quick. There we go. Stay relaxed. Put a bend in your elbow. Relax. Nice. So at the clinic. Her issue was he was giving, he was going, but her body language was sending him like around so fast. And what we were trying to understand is why is he going so fast? It's because we were bringing energy to the situation. Every form of transportation has this form of energy. If you have a car, it has gas, truck has diesel. If you have a bicycle, you have to pedal. Some horses that we've seen tonight have been bicycles. We've had to pedal them. They've been lazy, they've been dull. This right here is a Ferrari. If you touch the steering wheel, it is gone. It is built to go. So this boy is has the the juice. Okay. So we have to make sure that we work accordingly. Like we just touch the, the accelerator and he's gonna go. So then if we go, ha, huh, turn, go. Well, he's really gonna go fast. Twenty year old fox trotter, Miss oh, Melanie. <laughs> Jen says her. Jen says her dad likes to turn abruptly and say, "But Jesus." <laughs> You're starting a new vocabulary for the children yeah. of the world. Great. I like the send them, the send them type lunging um, and walking with them. The reason that we put real tight circles in first grade is for so many of these horses, we're trying to prepare them for us being in the saddle for horses that we don't know. So for a lot of you guys to say, my horse is more advanced than this, my horse does this, does that, understand that when we came up with this program, it's all designed on riding horses that we don't know and problem horses and really being able to see who we're riding. So that's what being in their space really helps. Nice. Got those shoulders moving. If he's too close, take that hand between you and his withers and put it between you and his face. And he'll take a step over away from you. There you go. Now you're moving forward. Try to make sure with your feet that you're always stepping into the horse. Don't let them make you take a step back. Like right there you took a step. Right there you're stepping back. Always be pushing into them and be the one that makes them lose their feet. You're the alpha man.
And for a lot of us, we have a, a nice horse like this one that's calm and quiet. Hell, he, he's half asleep during the exercise. And we think it doesn't matter. It always matters. And for a lot of you guys, you have a horse that's already pretty safe, that's already doing good. Those are the horses for you to build your muscle memory on and understand how this works. You don't want to learn how to do this with a horse that's trying to hurt you. You'd prefer to do this with a horse that is easy. So try to figure out the muscle memory. Try to work it out. Try to understand it. Try not to take a back, uh, backwards step. Okay, this is so Cheyenne, when the day comes, like you have a harder one, you can handle um, it. Good job, Emily. I've been through the respect series, and I have already sent a video in off kindergarten first grade, but I made some mistakes. So I am correcting those mistakes and going to resend this video. Uh, kindergarten and first grade. So she already has this horse backing up, so she can ask for two or three more steps and then release, and then two or three more steps and then release. So that horse starts looking, starts finding the reason to back up, getting that horse already knows how to do its job, and then start looking to add a little bit more, a little bit more from there. Look how she is back there. He's almost parallel with the saddle. He's behind the drive line. That's what I mean, guys, driving the horse. This is what really allows me to prepare that horse for me to get up close and personal. When you put that horse between your legs, it don't get much more personal than that. So, so many programs, you're the prepare to get the horse ready for the saddle is you being 15 feet away from them. That doesn't really, in my mind, prepare them for you being over their back. So that's why I love the circle like this, because look how close you are to her. Look how you're pressuring her and you're making her uncomfortable and you're already behind her eye and seeing how soft she is, how hard of a time she's gonna have. That's really nice. Okay. Hello, I'm Allison Rubenstein, and this is my third horse, Bella. She's an eight-year-old Rocky Mountain mare, and we are gonna work on kindergarten. We were unable to do preschool because she likes to run through fences. And sometimes you, you get a pleasant surprise like Miss Becky's talking about where she said, hey, I tried it with my horses and they are doing amazing. I, I'm surprised. I guess they respect me more than I realized. Yes, that's great too. Whenever I remove myself from caring whether the horse gets the right answer or the wrong answer, I believe that day my horsemanship changed overnight. When I stopped caring about, what, hey, did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? It doesn't matter. If you get it wrong, we'll do it again. It's another opportunity to, to, to find the right answer. If you give it to me right, that doesn't really excite me either. Okay, great. We'll do the next thing. Um, so when I get horses in and they fail right off the bat, I feel no different than whenever I get horses in that pass and I have to go all the way to college before I find something wrong. At the end of the day, it's the same job. Uh, we're just trying to, to find progress. Growth is where happiness comes from. Good job, little lady. That horse worked good. Wasn't much for me to tell you. All right, so we're going to do kindergarten. This is the mare. I, I remember the colt. He stuck out in my mind. We saw him a couple hours ago. The colt tried to, to run into your space over preschool. It'll be interesting to see how she how that horse backs up. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. Don't stop. Ding, 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 ding. Listen, you want to be like the... So nothing about this has gotten the horse to stop in its tracks. 
you don't have to be stronger. See, there you go. Don't stop, though. Keep going until that horse takes a step backwards. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be uh, powerful. The seatbelt belt will make me say bad words and then buckle up. The seatbelt will force me to buckle up simply because it is so that they're persistent. I'll get in my truck and drive off and forget to put my seatbelt on. And that thing can go ding, ding, ding. By the time that I get to the end of my road, I'm already frustrated, irritated, fine. I'll cuss at it and then I'll ultimately buckle up. You're going to do the same thing with your horse right here. Don't stop. Ding, 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 ding. Until you see the back foot of that horse take a step away from it. When you do that, that's when you release. Good job. I like that. A little rough. But then we got to follow through with it. There you go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. 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 Harder. Harder. More. More. Louder. Louder. I'm doing kindergarten through eighth grade. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Nice abruptness in the turnaround. Now, guys, come on. I'm not saying that you have to do this for the rest of your life, but especially when you're teaching a concept of, hey, pay attention to me when I'm leading you. How many of you guys have horses that whenever you're leading them, I have them. Have horses that when I lead them, they don't pay attention. Basically, when you're teaching a concept of kindergarten, you turning abruptly is just giving them a reason to pay attention to you. Nice work. You don't know how much it how happy it makes me to see soft horses. All right, Christine, I see you've gone to the reins for first grade. I like it. I do that a lot because it, the higher up on the halter you go, the more leverage you have. But I'll tell you a secret. One of my one of the things that I like to do is whenever I do go to the reins or I go higher up on the halter because the horse is a little dull, doesn't want to give, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll get away from the lead rope and I'll actually start using a, a crop. So I can be quieter and get more. So I can just move my finger and get that body to move. Turn your left shoulder in a little bit more. We should almost be north-south of the horse. We should be looking at our body should be the exact mirror, the exact opposite of what the horse is doing. That way, the horse always knows what we want. If we point our chest towards the horse, just like whenever we're directly in front of them, that's better. If we point our chest towards the horse, just like when we want them to stand still, it makes for more guesswork. Now, obviously, you're doing a good job. You got the horse moving around you, being soft and easy. But all these little things, they make all the difference. If people want to know what's the difference in a person that takes three months to do something, 90 days to do something, and the person takes three days. The person who takes three days is so much clearer than the person who takes three months. You know, the ability to make that horse know exactly what you want and all these little things, where you're looking, where your shoulders are, uh, what your feet are doing. All of that stuff makes a difference. Very nice work. Look at those feet crossing over. I like the pink boots, the fly boots. Make it obvious when, when the horse crosses over in the front. 
next time you need to put a different color fly boot on the back end so then i can say hey look that's what the, sh the feet look like whenever they're crossing over on the shoulders and that's what the back end looks like when they're crossing over on the back end hmm. all right miss jen what i'm saying is whenever i'm in first grade i don't want my chest pointing at the horse the whole time it, I, my left shoulder is directly pointed towards their left shoulder. Basically, I'm facing one way, they're facing the other, north-south. Kind of like she's doing, but I would have my hips more pointing the exact opposite of the horse's hips. This is the thing. You'll get the horse so sensitive that if I lean and look at their left shoulder, they're going to move and go. If I lean over and look at their right shoulder, they're going to lean and go. Basically, they're just mirroring if I look at them over my right shoulder, they should be moving off to the right, looking at me over their right shoulder. If I look at them over my left shoulder, they should be moving to the left and looking at me over their left shoulder. And when I show them my chest, they should show me their chest. Look how subtle and how repetitive that would be to the point that I really don't have to touch the horses or, or pressure them or do anything once they get a little advanced. I just look at them and they know which way I want them to go. They know kind of like obedience dogs that get to the point where the the handler just has to look where they want them to go and there's no signals well that's how good the horses get all this stuff of showing the lead rope and swinging it here and moving there all that stuff is constant once you the horse really understands this job just a look and a lean is enough to get that horse to move wherever you want it absolutely miss jen it's kind of like whenever i'm in the saddle i turn and look absolutely remember a horse's language, first language, is body language. So the more, if you want to control a horse's body, the best thing you can do is gain mastery of your body. If you can master your body control, you can control any horse. But most people aren't in control of their own body. The second they get a little uncomfortable or they get to thinking about something, they get where they no longer possess control of where their body's going or what their body's doing. Very nice. Christine, are you going gated? Uh-oh. Welcome to the dark side. Very nice. Big, huge horse, little bitty rider, or still drops his head below hers. People say, no, my horse is too big to drop its head. I say, ma'am. Where does the giraffe drink water from? Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter how tall, how big, how strong your horse is. If your horse respects you, it will drop his head to you. You can have a little pony. Have you, has anybody tried to back up a little pony? You'll have a little pony trying to get bigger and taller than you, and they they don't even come up to your waist, and they're trying to pick their head up and puff up like a little bandy rooster. Anybody ever been attacked by a rooster? Have you ever seen a rooster chase somebody? They're way smaller than a person, and they puff up so big, and they chase people all over the place if the person's willing to run. But you see, like Miss Christine right there, she didn't take a step backwards, so she wouldn't run from no that darn rooster. One of the most redneck thing you've said in a while. See, so we're paralleling with the horse versus being the op. There we go. That's what I want. I want you facing that direction. If we keep it patterned, it makes it easier for the horse to understand what we're asking. I mean, obviously, the horse passes with flying colors, both directions. But all the more pattern we can make something, the more the horse can know what we're asking, the less confusion, less confusion, less frustration. The 
They're coming out with Michaelisms. I don't think I have many Michaelisms. I have a whole book of them. You have a book of Michaelisms? Yeah. I have a, I have a page for it too, or a post about it. Oh. The course too. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. You want to hear some more? So guys watching this, this is what we want to see. It, it shouldn't be difficult to move the body parts of our horse. If it's difficult to get the horse to the speed that you want on the ground, it's probably going to be hard on the saddle. If you have a hard time moving the steering wheel, it's going to be hard on your saddle. If you have a hard time moving the body parts, it's going to be hard on your saddle. All these things get stiffer and stronger and harder to control the faster the horse goes forward. So if they can't do it in a quiet environment and setting like this, it's going to be hard on yourself. Michael. Hey, this is Sasha with Ulvar, my gilding. And um, Yay, we got a crop. I had trouble moving. I think we've made some progress. Oh, nice. Doing a decent circle around me. Don't lead him through it. Drive him through it. There we go. I want the that crop to parallel his body. So that means- Almost like Liberty. Like yeah, almost like Liberty. There you go. So that way when he doesn't move, don't lead him through the circle. You see how you're kind of pulling on his face? That shuts down some of his forward. You're gonna drive him through that. So when he doesn't wanna go, you're gonna bring that crop right to his flank, right to that back inside leg. That's gonna drive Here, him forward. I'm moving on to square dancing. I there we go. Bring the crop towards him. There you go, bring the crop towards him. Really okay, so the crop doesn't go up and down like the lead rope does it comes straight towards him the the lead rope goes up and down because that's the only way you can swing it and keep swinging it the crop it activates differently you're gonna bring that straight to him like a karate chop right to his back leg or his flank and he's gonna say oh oh i need to move and if you leave that crop between you and your horse and it parallels him very much like liberty well then very quickly wherever that crop goes he wants to go so when you want to move that shoulder, you bring the handle towards his face and his shoulder. He steps over. If you want to move that butt, the tip of that crop gets closer to him. So sassy, though. I like it. I, I like the energy. Mean face on. Even got a toboggan on. Like a cholo. Like an essay. That's it. Tell that pony what to do. See, bring it straight to him. There we go, straight to him. If you had to pick up a crop, you don't have to threaten that horse so much anymore. Because if they've gotten to the point where you said, the lead rope's not enough, I need to go get a crop, less talk, more action. You ask him nicely one time, and then you give him the guacamacaduya. You're only going to do that one yeah, time. Feeling, go, flank, trying, flank, right? flank. Now his head. Flank, flank. They're dull up there. So the problem with attacking the top of the horse is the top of the horse is real dull. So you want to make sure that you're going towards the and flank. here's my mini gelding. Same problem here. Oh, oh, oh. Over. Look at how cute it is. So again, crops should be beside him. You go right to that back leg, right to that flank. You're... So that's the beauty of having the the crop is we can touch them wherever we want to. Like it pinpoints exactly where you want. And that really allows you to get to sensitive areas. The reason that we pop with the lead rope over the butt is because we have to swing overhanded to be repetitive. Well, unfortunately, the only repetitive place that we can pop, you know, we pop a shoulder, a neck, we pop the butt. Those are all dull places. The top of the horse is the least sensitive part of the horse. As we're coming from underneath with a the crop, then they say, hi -ya! and they're willing to go. So you can talk more quietly and get more action. The dogs are bigger than the pony. Yes. Do you pop the shoulder? Do you pop the flank whenever you're moving the shoulder? Yes, because you have the bend. You're driving that horse forward, popping that flank if he stops. And then you start stepping towards his face while he's bent uh, and keep popping him in the flank. Because if he stays bent and stays walking forward, he'll move his shoulder for you. Great question. And you can lock your hand out straight to his shoulder, too. They're missing my face. Huh? They're missing your face? Are you done are You done stuffing it? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. 
dinner. So I think she's pushing on the other side. I can't see through that horse. His daddy wasn't a window maker. There we go. There we go. Nice. So especially when I'm grabbing that horse by the by the reins. And we're doing some flexing here. When I do this when I move the horse around with the reins. I really love a crop uh, in this scenario because I get to speak so quietly. I get to basically point a finger at their flank, and if they don't step forward, I can get to go tap, 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 tap release, tap, tap, tap. This is the equation: the less muscle that you have to use to move the horse, the better your timing can be. It's very difficult to be muscling the heck out of a horse and then have great timing on that. If you happen to go crazy on a horse to get them to move or do something, the odds of you releasing on a moment's notice is very, very slim. So that's why in a lot of these scenarios, if I'm having a hard time moving a horse, I don't really want to be using the lead rope because that's too much muscle. I want to be using my mind and my timing more, so that's when I'm going to change over to a crop. But it's the same thing, like however you want to say it, the most finished horses in the world are dressage horses or reining horses, depending on your flavor. You can't meet a good dressage rider or a good reiner who doesn't live with the set of spurs on. Oh my gosh, spurs are horrible. They want to do the least amount possible and get the most amount of response. And them having that aid helps and allows them to do that. They want to twitch muscle fibers in their calf and move that horse to move their big toe and move that horse, and those spurs allow them to do that. Well, in this scenario, we just want that horse to simply walk a circle around us and move their three body parts, head, butt, and shoulders. A lot of times for our duller horses, like, see how we're having to start working here? I bet you wouldn't have to work too hard if you had a crop in your hand. Do you remember how much of the examples you used to crop on for first grade? Can't remember. But you did for the So this is definitely a guy I'll be looking to drive around me in a circle and make him think about me. This guy's big and pretty. I think he wants you to think about him. Lori says, really like the hot horse examples in the videos. Thank you from the dark side. Has <laughs> <laughs> freakos. Yes, dull horse example. Also, I think gated. I think we have all the examples. If you guys knew how many, y'all are just seeing the videos that y'all are seeing. If you just knew how many videos I've made. I'm sorry. Every I'm time sorry. I make a video of this, make a video of that, make a video I'm of this one. I'm sorry. People want the content. Miss we're doing first Annie, working lead rope, work, working on lead rope, working a mule, Leroy.
Miss Lori says, should we use Spurs even for a, a sensitive pacifina or just a dull horse? Spurs scared me when I tried them years ago with my sensitive pacifina mare. I barely touched her and she jumped out of her skin. All right, Miss Lori, I use Spurs for two reasons and two reasons only direction and collection. Um, and you're absolutely right. If I would have used Spurs with the horse that I was raised on, the show Passos, they would have absolutely murdered me. Well, that's because they didn't know about direction or collection from legs. All that legs meant to go forward. All right, Miss Penny, you're doing great. Stick with it. See how she didn't quit? There we go. There we go. Look, look how she's jockeying for position. How she's not stopping. She's waiting for for the mule to make the adjustment. There you go. Nope, nope. But don't bring that crop up. Leave it in that back leg or that flank. There you go. There we go. Don't bring the crop up. Leave it down in between you and your, your animal. Very nice. Good job, Miss Penny. Way to fix it. Way to be persistent. That's what I mean, guys. When that horse is trying to pull away from you, don't let it pull away from you. Don't let it uh, have a tug of war match. You step with them. That's exactly what I mean. That's exactly how I mean to do it. All right, Miss Lori. Back to Spurs on a, on a sensitive horse. All my Passos now, they're offspring of all those hot horses that I can never ride with Spurs. All of them ride with Spurs. The, the rope and buckle I one was with Spurs on. Um, all my horses. The difference is, is they know what it means, and they have leg cues, and they turn, and they give, and they drop their heads, and they're relaxed. And they're off. So, so they understand the difference. Do you have to ride with Spurs? Absolutely not. You don't have to ride with Spurs. Heck, though. The first uh, eight years of my career, I never had a set of spurs on. And more importantly, I was scared of them because I had never used them. And I wasn't good with them at all. It wasn't until I got into roping that I had a need for them, number one. Um, and I had a reason to really apply myself and get good with them. So if you're not getting in a sport that you need that pinpoint accuracy, you need that ability to be able to move that horse wherever you want with your leg, just don't worry about it. You don't need it. Going out of town for 10 days, I feel like I'm going to miss out on so much, at least during these six weeks. I can only go to fourth grade as he is still young to saddle, too young to saddle. I might work on drive training. Sounds like a great idea. Leroy is huge. Leroy, come to a retreat. I need to mentally prepare myself. No, she says she, she's not bringing him to a retreat ever. She's bringing Fred. Okay. Are you making that up? You just want Fred. Yes. Want Fred. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I better not talk bad about Leroy. I bet he can hear me from there. This year that boy got satellites on the side of his head. <laughs> I've got some mules in the work that they get so mad that when they pin their ears, I can hear their ears hitting their neck. It's awesome. There we go. There we go. All right. So be aware whenever you show them that crop, a lot of times we'll show them that crop behind our body. So we think that we're pressuring the, the animal, but the animal can't see the crop because they can't see through us. So we have to make sure that we keep that crop between us and the animal so that they can continuously see it and know when we're pressuring them or not. Good job, Miss Penny. Good job. And uh, she is going through the respect series again as a review. I'm going to do first grade. All right, Miss Penny said, where should I put my whip to move the shoulders? You keep the whip in the flanks and you start walking. So at that point, the whip just becomes what keeps them going forward. Your lead hand becomes what keeps them bent. And then you start walking towards the point of their, their chest and their shoulders and it steps them forward. As long as they keep bent and they keep driving forward, as long as they're willing to stay outside of your bow, they're going to move their shoulders. You don't have to physically pop them in the shoulders to move the shoulders. As a matter of fact, really the only time that I pop the shoulders is when I'm directly in front of them and I'm moving them from one side to the other. I don't ever pop the shoulders uh, to, to get a leg yield. I just look to keep the bend and start walking in that direction.
You're doing a great job, employer. All your horses look really soft. So here, every any time that I have the opportunity to use the reins, that I have the reins on my horse, okay. usually I'm gonna grab the reins. What you saw me Personal doing there, purpose. or what I was attempting to do? Okay, okay. There we go. Thank um, you. But anyway, what I was attempting to do is, is uh, advance her a little bit with first grade to moving her hindquarters, and then I. Okay, so you're looking to advance her. I'm telling you, watch the difference. Change from your lead rope and grab a hold of those reins, and you will advance because. You'll be able to talk quite the the quieter you can talk and be heard, the more impact you'll have. So, if you go from the lead rope, which is the least pressure on a horse, to the reins, which is halfway up the halter, uh, which is you know twice as much pressure, very quickly you get to talk quieter. This is the same conversation we're having about the crop and Miss Penny being able to use that that crop and do such a good job. It just gets to the point where you get to talk quieter and your horse tries harder. All right, Miss Laurie, if you want to use a, a crop to advance, you absolutely can. Um, your horses are, are soft enough and easy enough that, that you can you can use that. There we go. Good job. So I was about to say, make sure you get out of that blender where, where both of y'all are. Pause. There you go. Plant your feet, move your horse. It's very easy. You got to understand, this is a horse's natural instinct, the ability to get them to move your feet too. That's what they do with other horses. This is the game they play. So don't let them play that with you. If you move, if you find yourself moving your feet, find yourself moving your feet forwards and towards them. There we go. Nice. There you go. Keep driving. Keep driving. If that horse wants to back, just keep driving. Try to take the... Uh, tightness out of the lead rope. Whenever they're going backwards like that, try to walk them quicker. What they're doing. There you go. Drop to that flank. Nice. There we go. That's what I like to see is that belly in the reins. So when that horse makes a hot step on you, makes quick, it says, oh, maybe I shouldn't make quick steps because I run into you. If you have a tight rein the whole time, well, then there's no difference. That's it. Step to them. Step to that horse. If you feel like the horse is too much in your space, put a hand up in her face. She'll step around you. All right, Miss Michelle said, I have to admit, when I watched the videos for this week and saw that fourth grade was mounting, my heart came to my throat. I haven't even had a saddle on her yet. I only have tomorrow to work with her, so we'll see and how far we get. Stay tuned. Miss Michelle, no reason to, to have your heart in your throat. Whether your horse is 3 or 30, been ridden all his life or hasn't been ridden, Stick to the steps. Allow them to work for you. If you don't feel like you're passing, if you don't feel like – the whole idea of this is for you to gain confidence. So if you haven't ridden a horse or you haven't styled a horse or you haven't rode a horse since the accident, the whole point of these is for you to feel like, I can press this horse, push this horse, pop this horse, ask of this horse, spook this horse, and there's no way that they would dare run me over or run away from me. That's what starts giving you confidence under saddle because it's directly related to being under saddle. When I feel like a horse will not run away with me on the ground or run into me on the ground, that gives me uber confidence that when I ride that horse, it will not run off from me. Um, I'll always be able to redirect it. So that's what we're trying for you to understand. And if you don't feel that way, well, then there's no reason to hop on until you do. Jen and Romeo. There we go. Don't move our feet around them. Move that horse around us. We're walking more feet than our horses. Horses given. Now we just got to start driving. Pop, pop, pop right in the shoulder. There you go. Pop, pop, pop. Drive that horse around you. 
So I want you to be pivoting on one foot. There we go. There we go. Now you're driving. That's it. Okay, so you're driving on the shoulders is more how you need to lunge in the circle. And whenever that horse gets stuck, it's because you get in front of the shoulders. There we go. That's what I want to see. Look how you're pivoting. That's what I'm looking for. That, so that's how first grade should be. You should be pivoting just like that, and then you can step in towards the horse. There we go. There we go. So it doesn't bother me at all when you move your feet, as long as they're moving forward towards that horse. So you had to push the shoulders to start thinking forward. So that shows you right now that your horse can pass. Now we just have to take our feet from moving. Good job. Nice drop of the head. So a lot of times, one thing our horse can't pass on the and the horse can, we're just not allowing them to. Very nice. Moving the shoulders. Very nice. So that takes a, a level of respect from your horse to be able to, to move in that way. That's what we want to see. I mean, that's what this whole respect series is about. It's just to, there we go. Nice. Nice. She said she's rethinking the donut that she ate before the spinning. People ask me, how do you spin so much all day long and be okay? Whenever you're moving the hips, look at the hips. You know, the hips don't lie, but the only way you can tell if they're lying is if you're looking at them, okay? So you got to put your eyes right on that butt and move that butt. Yeah. We will. Huh? Let's see your eight up. Hips don't lie. First grade was way harder than you make it look. We'll be practicing one more hurricane passes here in Florida. Good job, guys. All right. And another. Let me let me out of the four five. All right. How do you feel? It looks like it. Then, then there's another one after that. All right, Ms. Barr, desensitizing on Chica. Good job making it through the hurricane. I'm glad to hear it. Gotta watch out for Ms. Barb. She's always looking for the next thing. Look, she got a hula hoop. Popping on the saddle with it, making some noise. Sight, sound, and touch, touching them flanks. When you get from the mindset of I hope you don't to the mindset of I wish you would, the whole world changes. I think parenting is like that too. Those parents say, I hope my child doesn't act up. Oh, that baby gonna act bad. That parent that says, I wish you would. Them babies, they act real good. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Glad to hear all you guys made it safe through the hurricane. They can be a devastating place to be. We went through Katrina and ugh, crazy time. Guys, so we're talking about, you know, oh, this horse couldn't hold spurs because it's hot or sensitive. This is a firecracker of a filly. Like this little Paso filly, I mean, is wired for sound. Like Kramer on Seinfeld. And look, she is carrying carrying the whole warehouse's cart on her back. That just goes to show you it's not about the breed, it's not about the hotness, it's about the conditioning in which you give to your animal. 
what that is the normal what they expect. So Ms. Barb is pushing the envelope, so her horse is willing to say, okay, yep, you're crazy, so I'm used to crazy. I can put up with that. During first grade, she was extra sensitive on the left, but during this, she was fine. Go figure. Fourth grade mountain. Very nice. We hop on, we sit still. Horses are creatures of habit. If we get on and go, get on and go. Before long, they'll go before we get on. Miss Jen working on Romeo. Romeo doesn't look very enthused. <laughs> Romeo looks cool as a cucumber. He's like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Used to this. This is but Jesus Mia. I can see it. Well, tell Mia she's doing a heck of a job. Very nice. I like the energy. Good job. I'll tell you what, that's a freaking round pin right there made out of light post. There we go. Desensitizing in motion. Look at that space between her and her horse. Guys, there's nothing wrong with that space. That's a lovely space. If you walk traditionally every day, all these, you know how many times you walk your horse that you're not even paying attention to them, that you're talking on the phone, that you're not, you have, you have no intention on your horse. You know how much safer she is being that far away from her horse, leading her horse? So much has to go wrong for her to, to wind up in trouble. As opposed to the, the next person who walks with the horse right over their shoulder, sure, not paying around. attention, you know, walking them to, to wash them off, walking them out to eat, walking them out to pasture when they're not really paying attention to them. Good so job, space is your safety. Space is your friend. And you can still kiss your horse in your mouth or, or, or give it a cookie out of your mouth. I don't care about that stuff. Just as long as when you do it, it's on your terms. Very nice. Rubbing our horse down. Make sure when we cross over that back to the other eye, see how that horse is turning side? That you're very aware that that horse might come your direction. Last thing you want is a horse running from the flag. And see, see how it, your horse turns his head to the opposite side? Anytime we cross that spine, we're very aware of what we're doing. I 
I had a, a grown man trainer up in New Jersey. His his boss told him, oh, we're going to this clinic. Like, didn't give an option. Well, I'm going to tell you a secret. Professional trainers don't like to get told that they have to go to school. So he sat over in the, the corner. He pouted the whole clinic. And I worked this little horse, and the horse was like a national champion. His little three-year-old stud colt. And I was doing just what you're doing. Man, that horse tried to strike me, bite me, run me up, do all kinds of things. No problem. Flagged him, tarped him, did all the things. The next day, the owner came to me and said, hey, do you mind if my trainer does it? I was like, sure. Thank you, third shot. On the bar, he went Second, third, fourth horse, grade. Had to flag it on the other side. That horse ran, ran away from the flag. The horse was like 13 hands. The trainer was like 250 pounds, like 6'4". Huge, huge guy, little bitty horse. That horse ran all over top of him. From that moment forward, he wanted to listen to, to what I was saying. It's crazy how pain will teach you. That's why we're here having these conversations late at night. To make sure that you don't feel the pain. Let my pain talk for you. Yeah, yeah. Good helicopter. I like it. Good rope control. Very nice. So you guys are really starting to understand the concepts of what I'm looking for in these clinics. And now you really understand why I'm able to go so quick with a horse. If they're willing to pass the test, like if I throw that rope over once or twice and that horse says it's no big deal, great, on to the next thing. And I show it a flag twice and I touch his flanks and go over its head and go here, they go there and they say it's no big deal, on to the next thing. Because what I'm looking for is to make that horse uncomfortable. If that doesn't bother the horse at all, well then I know we're really not growing from it. For whatever reason, human beings have a weird we have a weird relationship with failure, with discomfort. We want everything to be comfortable. But we know factually that if you want to get stronger in a gym, you have to go tear up your muscles, and get sore, and that's where you grow from is from that discomfort. If you want to get smarter, you have to, to school yourself, which sucks. You have to wake up. You have to spend hours. You have to go, go read books. You have to do things if you want to – get skinnier you have to go on a diet which is uncomfortable because you're hungry all everything about growth of things that we want if we want to have a lot of money we have to work hard and study hard and drive hard. all the things in our society that are good we have to find discomfort and for whatever reason in horses i mean i see it in society too but in horses we are trying to avoid the discomfort so whenever i'm doing these things when i see that horse licking his lips and he just has no problem with it Boom, I'm on to the next thing. Boom, I'm on to the next thing. Boom, I'm on to the next thing. And if I go to enough next things, I'm going to run into something. And he's like, oh, what is that? And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that adaptation from discomfort. I'm looking for him to show me who he is when he's uncomfortable. And then from there, we can make it easy. After you find what makes them uncomfortable, what is the next step? Depends on what makes them uncomfortable. If it's a desensitizing thing and I'm asking him to stand still, Keep doing it, keep doing it until they stand still. If it's desensitizing in motion and it's getting them to turn left, well, keep sending them forward and turn them left. Keep sending them forward, turn them left. If backing them up makes them uncomfortable, keep backing, keep backing. Basically, do it till they don't suck at doing it. They don't have to pass with a, a 4.0, but they have to pass. But when I see that they're uncomfortable when we go through something, I know that I'm getting the most bang for my buck. I know I'm getting the most return on my investment. I know my client is getting the most out of my time. And I think of me working a horse like return on my investment. I want for every drop of sweat that I put out, that I am teaching that horse the most that I can, that they are learning the most that they can, that they are getting the most from their interaction with me. 
uh, the same reason when we go through these videos and I like try to explain to the very simplest that I can for you and try to go as in depth as I can with you guys. Because if you have the audacity to be up at this hour of night watching videos and studying, you deserve the best information. So I want you guys to get the most for your effort, the most for your money. Uh, so same way with the horse. I know I'm going to get the most out of them if I'm doing something they're uncomfortable. If they're comfortable, if they're easy at it, they're not the the learning curve there isn't going to be the same as if I'm doing something that they're not okay with. That's where this thinking comes from. That horse is doing great. And if it was the first session and we're going through this, that is perfect. Uh, you know, we're seeing who this horse is and what's going on. But outside of that, I see this horse here. I might be inside that horse one day, maybe two. And I might not pull out a tarp around this horse because he's already saying, dude, I'm good with the tarp. I'm cool with the fly. Okay. Well, then this horse, I might be working on spins or I might be working on side. You know, I might be working on something else. I'm going to find whatever he doesn't like. And that's probably what we're going to work on. But you guys are doing awesome. Yes, Mr. Lowe, you're absolutely right. It's best to find out what makes them uncomfortable in a controlled environment, a safe area with good footing and fences, rather than find out on a trail. So many people that I help and mentor and thousands of people that I've come into contact with who have been broken by a horse that I'm trying to help. That's the thing is they're getting surprised because they're not asking. Questions. They're assuming that the horse is broke, and because they're assuming, they run into trouble. Um, so that's exactly why we're going through these steps. That's why even those horses broke, that's why we're going through the steps to see what makes them uncomfortable. Good night, Miss Lori. She says she's too tired to see. <laughs> Absolutely right, uh, Miss Lori. Tarpy sensitizing comes in handy whenever the rain comes out and you have to pull a park out. But it's not even about the tarp. I don't expect a blue tarp to attack a horse on a trail. It's highly unlikely. What I'm looking to do is trigger that flight response, that prey response, that discomfort, and then show them how to deal with discomfort. If you think about it like this, it's not a horse's fear that hurts you. A horse can be super afraid and not hurt you at all. It's their reaction uh, to that fear. As a matter of fact, a lot of people get hurt by horses with the horse having no intention of hurting with no malice in them, not trying to hurt the person at all. So if that's happening, you know, it, it's the reaction that you're getting is what's hurting you. So we're trying to curve that reaction. How do you get somebody to respond better under distress? You can put them under distress multiple times. Hi, this is Jody Blazier and this is Fia in the background. And we have passed kindergarten and we've desensitized and she can pretty much go through all the grades however i figured we would still work on a couple of things that bothered her and one of them is the bag of cans so that's what we're going to do today we've already taken the flag stick to her nose which she does fine Now we're going to go ahead and try the bag of cans. Now we're going to the bag of cans. Walk with her, walk with her. What we don't have is that horse pulling on us. And the way we do that is we have the horse on the first, and we step with her. You see how that, that rein is tight? Don't make it tight. Make it loose. So when she steps away from you, then she goes up to her cheek, up to her shoulder. There you go. Step with her, step, step. Don't try to hold it. In these desensitizing scenarios, we can hold the horse still. What we want to have happen is if 
they start going backwards, that's fine. You can power walk and keep up with it as long as you're going backwards or backwards and sideways. But the second you start going to the wheel, you lose our step. Very good. That's what I want. That's what I want. So if you get scared now, you have to go forward. You go forward. Very nice. Very nice. Step two. Bags. I need to make me a new camp bag. My camp bag so many horses that it doesn't. Now we're going to try to drag the cans. That's not mean horse's fear doesn't hurt you, it's their reaction. That looks obviously fearful, that camp bag. And Miss Jody is not in danger of this moment. Now, see, in this moment, this is all about making sure that they can't play, you know, some horse. But what I'm saying is that horse isn't reacting hard. That horse isn't running over. That would be a reaction. I'm going to run over the rear end. That would be a scene. That's why we're doing this foot. We're doing this foot. Bag, Miss Cody, and good work with your pony. I need to make me a new camp bag. I don't realize how dull mine's gotten. Come on, man, let's get back in the camera shop. Mine could probably just come here, you ride a horse by itself. It has seen some action. He says she's not even scared of the can bag anymore. So my question is, am I releasing at the right time? I see she's got a problem with her left side that she wants to move her around when it gets behind her. And I eventually want to make this a drag obstacle. So any help is greatly appreciated. Thanks. Bye. Miss Jody, you did a great job. And I don't think you, I would do change anything. Do the game and, the game. and then um, from the saddle, you're going to drag it with a long line. You know where it's a good distance away from you. And you're gonna get where you can face up, pull it, face up, pull it, face up. That's just gonna make it easier. But it'll actually probably be easier uh, when you do that than whenever you're doing it like that and dragging it in front of you. Problem there? Miss Lori, you're like a ninja. Turning that work so fast with security. <laughs> I saw a mistake already. I should not have put that up there. She's very calm, but if she wasn't a calm horse, I could have been hurt. Okay. Already taking on the rest of your run. Good job. Bottom half. 
so look how how short she is and like where she wants to drive it and where she wants to be. So she's been putting in that work for a couple of years now. She already knows she's very thoughtful about where she's standing and where the plastic is at all times. She's had a lot that's of what the practice does for you. That's what most of the issues does for you. That's what stuff does for you. She made a mistake that nobody knows of that flag getting past her eye, just picking it up. And she said, oh, I thought I shouldn't have done that. What she's saying is, if that horse was a real righteous, and that flag ends up behind her eye while you're in front of her eye, it would be a bad day. Kind of muffled. Sorry, I'll get closer. I'm just saying what a badass Lori is and how good of a job she is doing. You can tell how practiced she is, how she's been doing this for a couple years already on multiple horses, and because of that, because of that, she has gotten a lot better. She's very thoughtful in where she stands, where that flag stick is. My name is Jody. Synthesizing emotion, got left and right, got back up. When you see people doing this, and you see them back in the horse over the tarp on their back, and you see it makes it look so easy, it makes you second guess the horse that you've ridden in your past. You're like, oh my gosh, my whole childhood was filled with rank horses. I didn't even know it. I just thought it was normal. So you gotta be careful with your normal. Snap a doodle. About to do the come gimme trick. Oh, that horse is already thinking come. Ballet park. There we go. So if you're wondering why she's on a fence versus the mounting block is the, that fence is actually a lot safer than the mounting block. That mounting block is easy to get bumped off of or get pulled off of. You can latch on to that gate like a spider monkey and hold on whenever that horse wants to step away or step into you. Step right on. Good job. Lord, you did great. Like a pro. Also, if you ever get on a horse and the horse tries to move up and you don't have a set of reins, you can also I grab hold of your ears and pick up on it and it'll stop them too. Just in case. What's going on, Derek?
So when I see Lori now versus Lori uh, two years ago picking it up, I look at the small detail. She's doing more or less the same ideology, the same stuff. But every little thing that she's doing is so thought through. Like, and she's so specific about how she sits, where she stands, where she's asking that the horses look so slick. Like the horses are, are understanding, it's clear to them. They're doing exactly what she wants them to do. And that's because she has everything taught to it. Unfortunately, the only way to get this slickness is yet you need good information. That's right, if she's not in the perfect place, Okay. Why don't you go from the the side? only way to get it that thought through is to focus on it for a long amount of time. <laughs> she's, gonna, she's like, okay, you Absolutely. If there's ever a question with the come give me trick, call them back over. It's better to crop on them than for you to have to jump towards the saddle. A lot of times what I'll do here in this position, you see how that shoulder is touching the gate? Yeah. Push her face away from you a little bit. And that will actually bring her hips okay. towards you. Stay this time. As we gather up the rope. Oh. Oh. All right, Derek is saying he doesn't have sound. Does everybody else hear me? If you can hear me, what I'm saying is, if you're doing a come give me trick and you feel like that horse can't get close enough, in this situation, push the horse's face away from you okay. and it'll bring the, the saddle I'm over I probably should have another taken six little, inches. I'm guessing I should have taken her just a little further up the up the uh, fence because I kind of ran out of fence here. But uh, we're getting the basics and looking for any any tips that you can. Yep, you so if you're asking for any tips, that, I mean, that's the only tip. Um, we, we do this on the bench here in these barns every day, all day. And a lot of my students will, will run to the same issue where they're having to kind of jump to the saddle. And that's because the horse eagerly comes right over to pick them up from the from the bench. Every single training horse we hop on in the barn and on the benches. But when that horse is eager to come over, they'll come face first, shoulder first. And if at the last moment you don't push their face away from you a little bit, well then a lot of times that's their front feet touch the bench and the saddle's still a little bit out of range. And you either end up jumping or you start learning how to push their face away a little bit. The video noise louder than me. There we go. Good night, Miss Penny. So you kind of see what I'm talking about with the with the slickness with the the practice is look how she just steps right through it. She knows exactly where she needs to be. Plastic exactly where it needs to go. Watch her hands the whole time. She's never out of position. Good night, Miss Lori. There you go. So, Miss Lori, I don't know if you're popping on the saddle for desensitizing or if you're doing it to move her. If you're doing it to move her, she's moving, so stop. And if you're doing it to desensitize, do it a little bit more sporadically so it's not so patterned. So right there, you move her off. Now relax, let her move, and then out of nowhere, smack this off. Ah! And that's how you're going to get more of a reaction out of her. Forty synthesizers. Yep, yep. So whenever we are 
doing things we want them to pick up, we pattern it very well. When we're desensitizing, especially when the horse is doing so well, we want to be more sporadic. And just out of, that, out of nowhere. So we, we see if they're going to react. Because if we do it, especially on a horse uh, advanced like this, we just pop and pop and pop. They're not going to react. And that's not the point. The, the point isn't for them to pass with flying colors. The point is for them to go to see if they would react if we caught them off guard. Uh, there's so much of the training in the future of us going through the respect series and then go going through the the horse college and getting your master's degree and your doctor and all these things that we have lined up in the future that's going to be so patterned through this a lot of the stuff we are the desensitizing and things like that we are trying to to spook the horse or get a rise out of the horse or have that confusion of i don't know what to do so they they really start listening She's gathering up her rope. I'm an old girl, so I move slow. So this is a part of it that's a little awkward to step, to stepping the leg over. It's not easy for anybody, but you only got to do this for a, for a session or two, and then immediately you can move them to a picnic table or the bed of a truck or something like that. Very nice. Good girl. I prefer getting on from the mounting block. She's, she will do it from the mounting block too, but I just wanted to get on the fence to, to complete the exercise. So, so the video, I can't, I don't know if you guys can hear it. She's saying she, she does the mounting block as well. That is the, the ultimate goal for all of them. But we think the less stable something is, that's the more finished horse that we call over there. The greener horse is for the come give me trick, the more stable we need. So a gate, um, a fence, something like that. And then we start weaning them off of that and we start going to a picnic table, the bed of a truck, uh, we'll something time. that they can't knock us off of. Just like everything else with horsemanship, when we're asking them to do things that sometimes they don't know how to do, we expect them to get uncomfortable. We expect them to get the wrong answer. And we always want to have ourselves in a place where we feel confident, where we feel safe to continue to pressure them. Uh, so that's exactly why this young lady is using her gait to do the come get me trick. It's because if that horse got fussy and tried to run away, well, she can hold on to the gate and hold on to her horse. If that horse got fussy and bumped into her, she's straddling a gate so she can clamp down and keep pressuring the horse even if that horse is bumping into her. Very nice. job okay it. so after she played with it herself now we're just gonna kind of she goes oh yeah like <laughs> and like i said i've desensitized her before not with a feed bag a flag and a stick and all that but not with a feed bag but you can see she's real <laughs> a little flagging blah 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 <laughs> Hi, I'm Lori, and this is Tika Dora, and we have problems with speed issues, and I need to be more clear on rating her speed. All right, so this is Miss Lori, another Miss Lori. And she nicely will walk with her head down, 
she'll stand here with her head down and be a good girl. But our problem is B. All right, so we are working on speed control. So we're out of the horse help course. We are on the membership review. So we can't forget our members either. We got to review their videos. So we're going to help her with her speed control. Love that that horse can walk on loose rein. That is great progress. So this is an ex-show horse that we are trying to get slowed down, trying to get calmer and quieter up in North Carolina. So she's working on getting her soft, getting her easy, putting her head down. The issue she's having is when she picks up the motor, being able to turn it back off. Backing her up crooked. I was just about to say that, that I haven't seen that arena before. It is good looking. Moving those shoulders around. So Miss Laura has really got kind of figured out that the ability to take that horse off center is to take the, the power away from the horse. So the more we can bend them, the more we can use them, the more we can use that circle that we're not holding them back in a straight line, the less explosive that they become because we're not pulling on them. So, I mean, basically she's leg going all the way around that circle to ultimately back up crooked and release. So you're talking about a young lady who, who has done this been there, done that, shown horses, uh, and it's now really getting into the horsemanship side and really studying on it, and it shows for what she's trying to do. She's trying to get that horse softer left and right. She's trying to get that horse uh, to drop his head even more, and that's directly going to help. It's very difficult for this horse to give her too hard of a time because she isn't playing this horse's game. Look at that horse is always off center. So what happens with a, a mare like this uh, – what I'm getting at is a show horse that kind of gets stuck with their RPMs on where that becomes explosive. It's when they get stuck in a straight line and we're trying to hold back on them. And the more we hold back, the more excited they get and the RPMs get stuck in the red line. And we, even we, though we left our foot off of the good job, love that. When we take our foot off of the gas pedal, they don't slow down. That's when they pop and they get explosive. So I love to see this mare. How you got her dropping her head, dropping her head cuts off the adrenaline pump and you're taking her off center, you're not trying to hold her in that straight line. There we go. Look how low her hands are. A lot of times you ride the gated horses, they pick their head up, we automatically want to pick our hands up. Took her on a trail ride. She was able to keep her stuff together in a straight line longer than ever before. I am very glad to hear that. So this horse is, is giving so well <clears throat> that this horse, as Miss Patty, she has a, a Tennessee Walker mare that's very similar. It's very hot to try, very, very hot to go in. She was having an issue translating that out and about. One of the things that she did is whether using a set of draw reins or a German Martingale, what that can do is now you can get forward motion, but also drop the head at the same time. And what we can get out of that is 
as we're going forward, we can cut off the adrenaline pump. So I see this mare when she's walking, she's completely relaxed. But whenever we start going, her way of going is to pick up her head and that adrenaline gets the pumping and then she gets up. So it might not be, it might not be far fetched to give that horse a go with a German Martingale or something that can draw her head down. And you might just completely finish her up and get that last 20% that you're looking for out of her where you can speed up. And the second you take your feet off the accelerator, she just goes back to sleep because the whole time she's going with her head down. And I realized that that would be different than how you're accustomed to, to riding her where she, where she carries herself like that. But it might just be the fix that, that we need to, to finish her off because you have her well on the way. All right, this is Miss Penny and Miss Penny on Lee Rule. All right, Miss Lori has a martingale. Perfect. Yeah, a martingale, you put that martingale on a snaffle, you already got her so soft and already understanding how to drop her head. So you really shouldn't get any issue. Uh, then you just start saying, hey, even though we're going faster than the walk, I still want your head to be down. When she figures that out, it's going to be a game changer for you. That is a huge meal. Will a German Martingale make a claustrophobic horse amped? A German Martingale on a horse that doesn't know how to give the pressure and soften its face uh, will absolutely amplify and make a horse claustrophobic. The reason I suggested for Miss Lori's horse is because I see how soft Miss Lori has her horse. She has a horse. I mean, she just touches two reins and the horse buries his head. She just in motion, she can move that horse's face all over. So I don't think that that horse is too claustrophobic. If it would have been that horse two years ago, absolutely not. I would definitely not suggest a, because the horse really didn't give the pressure, really wasn't soft and easy. So you're absolutely right. Uh, will a German Martingale make a, claustro a horse claustrophobic or amped? Yes, if they don't know how to give the pressure and now you're capping them, yes, that could be a problem. But on the other hand, if you have a horse that does know how to give the pressure and you can just use it for what it's made for is anywhere your hands go, you're drawing the horse's head down to ultimately release them and give them back a loose rein, then they could be super beneficial. But I mean, that's every tool. Miss Penny, you never seek to amaze me. You're always doing something cool. So she had her other horse here. In fact, she has a couple horses here. Uh, but her last horse here is Fred. Oh, Fred's the man. Uh, big Western Pleasure Pony. And he's a big dude as well. So remember, don't mule up with the mule. If they lay on you, bump, 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 and bump it in a way where you're not using force, you're using friction. I don't want to get stuck in, I never want a mule to lay on me or to ever have that constant straight line between my hand and their face because they can out persist you. I know that's hard to believe because you are a woman and women are persistent, but that's a mule. Hey. <laughs> That is a mule, and they don't call they don't call mules stubborn for no reason. So anytime you get in this situation, bump, 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 bump. Almost make it the mule's idea by being so freaking persistent. Nice. Good job. That's about as good as I've seen constant contact go with a meal ever. Good job on being persistent. All right, guys. Well, that sums up our videos for this evening. Did you finish them all? Yeah. Look at you. Thank you so much for sending in your videos and... We will keep this up. We have Horse Talk Live tomorrow. The Q&A, yeah.
We have the Q&A tomorrow. I will see you guys there. Hey, all this stuff, all this stuff, the work only works if you put in the work. So make sure you guys, oh, Miss Patty said, where is hers? One second. Do, 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 do. One yeah, second. Shelby had to cut him off early today, so let me see if it. Did you? Huh? Hold up. You find it? I got you, Miss Patty. Don't freak out. Yes, I have one more. This was two days moment. She's come a long way. Her head is left drafted. This is Miss Christine. She was loping her horse. Horse is looking a lot better, I tell you that. Very nice. Very nice. Did you see her take her leg off that, the gas pedal? And the second she did it, that horse was just like, oh. You want to ride horses around like you have an uh, engine brake. I don't know if you, any of you guys have ever been in a big truck, but when you let, let your foot off the gas, they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's just what Miss Christine did with her horse. She was gassing, gassing, gas. Whoa. That's how our colt starts. In two weeks of riding, two and a half weeks of riding, every colt start that I have on the place, when I'm loping them around, the second I take my legs off of them, they are coming back down to me. And so much of it is just the way that you condition them uh, to listen to your seat. So right there, her legs are on her horse. She's driving, she's driving, loosen the hips, legs wrapped around her horse, riding one hand. Look at her eyes, how her eyes are ahead of her horse. She's not looking at her horse. She's looking where she's headed. She's looking where she's going. See, look, look at her, look left. Very good job. I'm telling you, that right there is years of practice right there. Look how specific she's being with where she's looking and how she's riding. Good job. All right, Miss Patty. Sorry, I almost missed your video. I got it. Taylor and Miss Patty working on the canner. Driving. That's it. That's it. Keep that lower leg wrapped up on her. Miss Patty. So if you want to get from that four beat to more of a three beat, let's wrap those lower legs on to pick her belly up. Sit a little further back over her butt and then use more of the arena where she can go somewhere where she can use herself a little bit more. You put those three, three things into play and you should be able to, to get her from four beat to three beat. She bucked today and I think we fixed it. I had a bit of a come to Jesus. Well, sometimes you just got to get a little religious, if you know what I mean. Good job. Way to take your horse to Sunday school. All right, Miss Wendy and Fireball. See what we're working on. We are working on a spin. Step around. Do, 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 do. Hey, hey, Luisito. All right, Miss Wendy. I think we're trying to work on a step around. Maybe we're moving the horse's butt. Do, 
if we're looking for a spin, I think we're, we're moving a butt. That's what we're doing. There we go. Okay, okay. So she's pivoting on the forehand. Getting prepared for... Gotcha, gotcha, Miss Winnie. Completely understand. So we're looking to move that horse's butt. So she is sitting on her outside and driving her hip to the inside. This is the prep work, the groundwork for flying lead changes. This is the ability to take your leg off and move that hip that direction. The reason that it was a little unclear is because before he was really trying or moving, um, you're sitting off the one side taking the leg off. I thought you wanted to spin. I was going to say, hey, you know, you're sitting on the wrong side, but you're doing just right, being ridiculous and obvious, and he figured that out, how to move that direction. What she is prepping for, ladies and gents, is for lead departures, uh, and for flying lead changes, she just wants to get to the place where she sits in one direction and opens the door and that hip falls that way, which is really going to help. She's working on the most advanced thing there is. That's like the last thing that I do is moving those hips. Look at you. You're getting ready for flying lead changes. Oh, my gosh. Proud daddy moment. Guys, y'all have been awesome. Uh, way to stick with it. Way to stick around. We have gone through a lot of content tonight. Over three hours and eight minutes of content. All that content is you guys working. Uh, so keep putting in the work. The work only works if you do the work. So really glad to see you guys out there uh, working hard, working through problems, looking for that discomfort, looking to put the pressure on yourself. Listen, adaptation only comes from discomfort. So if you are comfortable with what you're doing, you're not trying. Quite frankly, if you are comfortable with what you're doing, you're not trying. You have to try something that you're awkward with. You have to try something that you're uncomfortable doing. Uh, now, notice I said I don't want you to be in danger, uh, but I do want you to be uncomfortable. Uh, I want you to be awkward. I want you to have your hands or your legs or your feet or your seat in the wrong place uh, because all those things let me know that you're doing something that you're not accustomed to doing, and that's where we find the growth is. Look how many amazing role models – uh, from Miss Wendy to Barb and, and the all the Lori's and Christine and all you guys who are years in, like all you ladies are years in in practice, and that's when the that's when we're saying, oh my gosh, look at this, uh, look at Lori, look at Barb, look at Wendy, hell, guys, they've been working on this for years, right? So if you are just starting and you're just following, or you're in the horse help course and you're just seeing anything, man. All these other people that are getting it so so easy. They've been working on this for years. You got to understand, the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. If you're having a hard time, that's okay. That's part of your journey. Just keep sticking with it. Keep putting one foot in front of the other until you get that momentum rolling, and you will get it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. I'll try to get me some shutout before we got to ride horses again. Hey, hey.